Here's a really good example of a river that can sometimes be contentious and a river that certainly is loved and is a special place to go fishing, the Mackenzie. And the Mackenzie, we thought when we started this process, was going to be one of our most complex rivers um, until we looked at the Umpqua. And, uh, and this wouldn't look so bad after all. But here at the Mackenzie, this is the current regulations, and every color here signifies a different regulation in the Mackenzie. So right now, as it stands today, there's, there's eight different segments of the Mackenzie that each have a different regulation. And so discussions with Oregon State Police, discussions with district staff um, who got the pulse from the public, um, we were able to switch, this, switch the regulations in the Mackenzie so you have two regulations only. So you'll have these, these yellow areas, which are the same regulation, and the segment in the middle, which is blue, is where we stock hatchery trout. So again, it went from something that's very complex and hard to understand to something that's pretty streamlined and easy to understand. And it really provides you know, clear opportunity. The, the, the feedback that we've gotten from the public up there so far was, was pretty positive on, on that particular change. Again, these are all proposed changes. All this has to still go through our commission for approval. So if I'm using the terminology, this is a change, I'm just being casual. This, these are all proposals. And so the next one here is um, some of the examples that we'll be talking about here locally. Um, and we have district staff here that will, that will help fill in some of the blanks if I don't get it right. But again, looking across the landscape and trying to find consistency, uh, the districts identified when we came out to our meeting some of these changes that could occur that would help fit into these categories. So for example, uh, Howard Prairie and Hyatt um, would now switch to zone reg. Those two, the only change there would be that those fisheries now would be open year round. Uh, there's no other changes to the bag limits or the catch limits and any of that kind of stuff. It's just simply now to be open year round, to be consistent with other places where we have lakes. Uh, immigrant Reservoir, um, that one I believe was a crappie change. And that was um, uh, basically taking the size limit off of crappies just so the crappie would be no limit. And that just made that consistent across the board. Be clear to understand. Uh, the next one uh, is Applegate Reservoir, um, where that one would fall into the trophy bass regulation category, where you could keep five bass per day, only one over 15 inches. And then down in Todd's district, uh, Todd's uh, interested in removing the, the half pounder regulations that occur on the Sixes, Elk, and Pistol rivers and moving those to zone regulations. So, what that does in essence is it removes those winter fisheries that occur for those half pounders and just keeps those rivers open during the normal trout seasons of May through October. I would, yeah, I would say one other thing. Those streams are open for steelhead at that time. So, and the, the effort there is on steelhead and occasionally people catch those half pounders. So, but it's a source of confusion. The regulation is a source of confusion. So if, if that regulation is removed, you, you still will be fishing out there for steelhead and if you caught a half pounder over 16 inches, it could be tagged as a steelhead. Half pounders under 16 would be considered trout, and trout would be closed at that point. So, okay. so in essence, I mean, it's a, it clarifies the regulations, which has a whole series of dates associated with those half pounder regs. But in essence, it doesn't really change your experience out there because you still be fishing. You can still retain those fish if you catch them underneath what Todd is talking about. We didn't get into all the details yet. We're still working through the road. Um, we, we, it's a very complex system. You know, again, when you have these overlaps of trout and, and steelhead, you know, there's, they're just, you have to really be careful of that balancing act there. Um, things probably aren't gonna change too much in the road. Um, probably not at all, but what we're working on is the language, trying to streamline how it reads so that it's much more clear as to what people can do. So um, that's all I really have to say about that one right now. And the other one uh, that we're working on again is these anti-snagging rules that you guys may be familiar with. And we've got multiple anti-snagging rules, uh, which are leader length limits on small streams and big streams and bottle rules, all these different kinds of things. And, and those things aren't going away, but we realize through this process that they're very confusing. Um, how they read. So we really want to streamline and simplify how those rules are going to read. So we're on a separate effort. We sort of have a subgroup that's working on some of that language change to make that a lot more clear so people can understand that. 
So anyway, that's, that's kind of the examples of the Southwest. Kind of moving on, um, just the general layout, like I mentioned earlier, is something that we're really interested in. We think that's going to go a long way in how people can understand the regulations. So we've been developing some different layout options. And this is sort of the direction that we're heading right now of how we want it to look. So this is just an example of the of you know how they would read and look differently than what we have now. We want to make them a lot more clear uh, and, and, and just more readable. Here's here's a really good example of how a zone would look. Okay, so this is the central zone. And right now in the current book, the central zone, I believe, is six or seven pages long with all the regulations. And with our our reformatting, we're able to get the entire central zone down to three pages. And you know, bold print, bulleted, bulleted items, if there's any changes, we're getting away from the terminology uh, special rules and calling them exceptions to the zone regs. So we're just trying to change up some of that language. I guess I didn't mention it, I missed it when I went through, but oh, here's an example of the northeast zone. And the northeast zone now is probably on about four pages, so we've got it now a page and a half. And that's for anything that you need to do over the Northeast. So it's really simple for someone to open up the book now and just go and it'll be really simple for someone to open up the book and say, I know exactly what I need to do. And the thing of, that we're really focused on here is the layout and then the, the, the consistency of the language. So you're reading the same thing in every zone. So we're not saying the same things two different ways, which leads to the confusion. And that's, again, the beauty of that database that we have done is it allows us to maintain consistent language instead of having all these little variations that occur. <clears throat> one thing I didn't mention, I'll, I'll just kind of step back for a second, was one of our, I talked about the plain language that we're really interested in trying to accomplish and one of the things that, uh, that we're moving forward on uh, and proposing, we'll be proposing is to get rid of all the terminology that says uh, adipose fin clip fish and non adipose fin clip fish. And we're defining that right up front as hatchery fish and wild fish. So throughout the book, you'll read, you may retain one wild, one wild trout. Or we're even going to change the language for salmon steelhead. So if you're in some of these coho fisheries, you can retain one wild coho. You can retain, you know, two hatchery chinook. And so we're being really careful to define that correctly in the book so that for the purpose of the regulations, that's what a hatchery and a wild fish is. We're not trying to get into the semantics of it all a political debate over hatchery and wild, but again, from from a from like the, the, the Joe Public angler guy that's out there, we want him to be able to understand, yes, I can keep hatchery fish or wild fish and not get all mixed up with this science speak, which I think is really confusing for people. And that also leads to inconsistency in the book, because you write it different ways. Uh, the next steps that we're, that we're approaching, um, we, we just uh, set a contract with new, with new printer and publisher. Um, the, the company that we've been using for a number of years, um, our contract expired. And we're going to be moving forward with a whole new look. And we're getting away from the newsprint look of our regulations like we have now. And we're going to be going to a glossy magazine style. And it's a company called J.R. Griffin. And they're, um, they work with 20 states across the U.S. and that's what they've specialized in is, is regulation layout and they actually specialize also in advertising. So our book will look slick and basically it'll be almost free for us because of the advertising sales that'll go, that'll go into that. Uh, we've already seen some sneak peeks of some covers that they've been mocking up and it just, it's a whole different feel to the book. So it's going to be an exciting change to move into. The last part um, of the things that are coming is uh, we've been working for the past couple of years now on a mobile app for your phone that has all of the fishing regulations in. So for those of you that are tech savvy, uh, that's coming here in the next six weeks or so. And we're going to launch it this year as a beta version because we're still working out some bugs, but we want to get some feedback on how, how functional it is for people. And I just want to show you a couple of slides of what that will look like. So you'll have a, a basic home screen here where you'll have different categories of information that you can get, including all the rules and regulations. And if you were to click down through the rules and regs, you'd get an overview map of the state, and then you can kind of start burrowing in to where you want to fish. And it gets down to accuracy within five meters of the stream bank. So you'll know exactly where you are, something where you have, a, you'll show up as the geo reference as a blue dot on the screen. So you'll know, 
you know, where you're at and what the regulations are for that particular water body. Uh, it's very, it's been very cumbersome to get this done, um, but we're, we're, we're really close and it's going to be a really nice tool for people to utilize. You'll be able to be right down on the water and be able to pull up the most current regulations that you have. So we're working on all of the, the back end work of how to make sure it's updated with like, if, it, if you're on Columbia, for example, and the rigs change, you want to get informed of what's going on. So we're working on that tech, technological piece, which is, which is difficult, but we're, we're almost there. It's really slick. And finally, uh, last couple of slides here. Uh, sort of the, the next steps for, uh, the next steps of how, how we're moving forward and next steps for opportunity for public input. Um, we're continuing to have meetings. This is the second one. We've got six more around the state. Tomorrow we'll be in Roseburg, then Clackamas, and then heading over to uh, LaGrande. No, excuse me, we're heading down to Klamath Falls, Bend, LaGrande, and then finishing up on the coast of Newport over the next month. So, you know, tell your friends and family to come out and see if they're interested in what we're working on here. Um, and then, um, as far as public input, uh, we're looking to get a commission approval um, in September. And the next commission meeting is, is on August 7th. And that's going to be in Salem. And at that point, I'll be in front of the commission giving them an informational session on the regulations. And if at that time, uh, about a week before, 10 days before that commission meeting, somewhere around the week of July 27th, is when you'll be able to pull the regulation proposals off of our website. And the website's right down here in the bottom. And then that'll be a good opportunity for you guys. I know we didn't get into a lot of the details tonight, but that's when the details will be flushed out more. And then September, We'll, on September 4th, we'll be out in Seaside looking for rulemaking from the Commission. And that's the time uh, that we're looking to get these regulations approved and set into motion for publication in 2016. And those, that would be the final package um, of regulations. I wouldn't expect very much change from the August to September meeting. It'll pretty much all be in there. Um, but that one will be available on our website around the week of August 24th. So those are some other places that you guys can see the details if, that you might be looking for, and then have some opportunity to provide feedback um, either to local staff uh, or at the commission itself through public testimony. And then this is the last slide I mentioned, the public meeting. So here we have, again, a series of them coming up here all the way through July 6th. So, you know, tell your friends and hopefully more folks come out. <laughs>